Hello everybody. Um, today we are going to talk about cardiac ventriculography. Um, in the cardiac catheterization lab, we usually call it LV gram because we are usually doing the left ventricular gram. But uh, for the sake of completion, it it is called cardiac ventriculography because it can also involve the right ventricle uh, if you want to do that. Um, I try to add a video every week, and uh, I have the email address. For some of you uh, so that I send emails uh, whenever we add new videos but since it's on the YouTube you can also subscribe and, and turn on the not notification um, so that every time I add a video you can have it uh, but again as I said I try to add at least one video every week uh, trying to cover the basic topics related to cardiology and and cardiac catheterization lab so with that we come to the cardiac ventriculography or an LV gram, it is a, in the recent days a, a, a forgotten step uh, during diagnos diagnostic catheterization. Um, it involves one or two more steps where you have to put a pigtail catheter into the left ventricle cavity and then uh, hook it to the power injector. But as we will be covering this today, you will see that you can get a ton of information by by doing that. and. Uh, in the past, a diagnostic cardiac catheterization was not complete till you do um, a LV gram. And this uh, holds true even right now as well. But since we are relying more on the echocardiogram and other modalities, we, we seem to have forgotten this. But today I will try to stress how important this is and how much information that you can get from doing an LV gram. So on the left, you will see a pigtail catheter in the left ventricle uh, with a power injector injecting the dye into the left ventricle cavity, and then the dye is being pushed into the aorta. If you see the picture one here, I have, lab I have labeled the structures. In the yellow, you have this aorta. In the blue, you have the catheter, and in this case, the pigtail catheter. You can even see the coronary arteries, the left system, and with the arrow I'm showing the right coronary artery. This is your left ventricular cavity, your diaphragm, the spine on the left, and on to the left, I'm just going to circle this, is your left atrium, and we will see why it is important to know where the left atrium is because it will help you quantify uh, the mitral regurgitation. So let's go step by step. What are the information? Uh, what are the information that we can get from the left ventriculogram? You might all be aware that we can estimate the ejection fraction or the wall motion abnormality. So, if the patient comes in with a, with an MI and you are not sure which kind of which which one is the culprit, coronary artery lesion, you can also do a wall motion. You can see the wall motion abnormality by doing this left ventriculogram. You can roughly estimate the ejection fraction of this patient um, and also see what the LVEDP is that will help you take care of this patient and get you information quickly as compared to waiting on the echocardiogram or cardiac MRI in these patients. So if you look on the left, uh, I have uh, picked this cine loop and uh, and this is for a reason i want to i want you to pay attention on the wall motion so this is i'm just going to label this is your anterior wall near the apex is your antero apical wall and then you have the, the inferior wall so if you look at this cine loop on the left you will see an abnormality here so what you are seeing is that the basal portion of the heart just the basal portion of the heart is moving while the entire anteroapical, inferior, infraapical, I'm just going to make a round circle around that, is hypokinetic or not moving at all. This was a patient that I took care of. This patient had elevated troponin EKG changes and normal coronaries. So when we did the LV gram, we found this, you have this 
basal portion of the heart moving where the anteroapical, apical and then the inferior, inferior apical is not moving and in this case this is Takasubo or what we call like an apical ballooning or stress-induced cardiomyopathy. This is a classic for the Takasubo or stress-induced cardiomyopathy because first of all you cannot explain this wall motion abnormality with any coronary lesion and then since you have already done the coronary angiogram and you haven't found any lesion having elevated troponin and a patient with classic and STEMI when you did this last step of an LV gram right away you have the answer for the patient instead of waiting for this patient to go for the an echocardiogram so for all these reasons I'm just stressing that you can get a bunch of information by just doing a simple LV gram. Second, we move on to the second thing that you can see in this patient is if the patient has got an aortic dissection. You might see a flap in the aorta. And see how nicely on the left in the silly loop you can see the opacification of the, of the aorta, aortic root. It's kind of a little dilated. You can also see if there, there is aortic root dilatation. But you can also see aortic dissection as well in these patients. Then we move on to the second, third thing that you can see as, as, as we talked in the beginning um, that when you do an LV gram, it also pacifies the coronary arteries. Sometimes if you have patients with cabbage and you don't know the anatomy of the grafts and you're not able to find the graft, you can do an LV gram and then you can see the coronary arteries, uh, sorry, the bypass graft arising from the aorta and going to the heart. So you can kind of get an idea of where that graft is coming and then you can selectively engage them with a catheter. So yeah, so so basically if you're not sure about the, the graft anatomy, this can also help you kind of localize the graft uh, in patients who have coronary artery bypass graft. The fourth thing is the VSD or the free wall rupture. The free wall rupture in patients who have late presentation of, a, of, a, of an MI mainly involving the, the LAD uh, is, is, is a surgical emergency, patient not doing well, uh, you can do an LV gram if it is a pseudo aneurysm with the dye going into the pericardium. Uh, so you, you can get a lot of information from that and you can ask your CT surgery colleague uh, and the patient needs to go to the OR. Or you can also see what we call like a VSD is probably missed mostly near the apex, inferior apical area. You will see the dye going from the left ventricle cavity right into the right ventricle. So that will tell you if the patient has got a VSD um, and that will give you a little, more, a little bit more information right away. Again, as I said, instead of waiting for the echocardiogram. So some of the technical things that we, we need to know about that is when, when you are doing an LV gram, uh, your tech might ask you what are the settings would you like us to put into the power injector so you will you will hear us saying 10 for 30 or 24 40 or uh, or 24 60 so what does that mean so if for example if if you ask your tech to do an LV gram for 10 for 30 so the first number 10 is 10 cc per second so you want the the power injector to be at the setting of injecting 10 cc in one second and then that second number 30 is the total amount of of volume that you want to give to the patient or the total contrast that you want to give to the patient so in this case 30 means 30 cc so the, what the power injector will do is it will inject 10 cc in one second 10 cc in the second second and 10 cc in the third second so so basically in three seconds it will inject 30 ml and so, as I said, depending on uh, on how much information you want or, or how big the patient is, you can you can choose this. Dep also, depending on if the patient has got renal dysfunction, you want to try to minimize the dye load. Uh, you go for the lower settings um, in those patients. With this, we, with this, we come to the last uh, thing that we're going to be touching about uh, touching, and I have drawn picture here uh, on the bottom. Again, as we as we talked about, this is a forgotten step in the di diagnostic catheterization. 
but it can give you a lot of information. So one of the thing uh, that you can see in this patient is uh, my, uh, valvular regurgitation or mitral regurgitation. So basically, if you come back to the picture one here, um, so right in around this catheter, you, I, as we talked about in the beginning, you have this left atrium here. So if you do an LV gram and you see the blood going through the mitral valve into the left atrium, that can tell you if the patient has got mitral regurgitation. And then the next step would be to, how do you quantify that? It's a very, very old method when, when we started doing coronary angiogram, even before that, they used to do LV gram in 1980s, 70s, uh, and then they quantify the mitral regurgitation. Very crude way of quantifying, but it's still being used in the cath lab. Uh, now we have more accurate ways of measuring the mitral regurgitation, mainly with the echo and, and cardiac MRI. Nevertheless, if you are doing an LV gram, um, it can give you some information about the uh, mitral regurgitation so that you can um, send the patient for further testing. So when you hear somebody saying, okay, let's do an LV gram, they do an LV gram, and then the, uh, then the cardiologist says the patient has got 2 plus MR or 3 plus MR, 4 plus MR. So what does that basically mean? It's not something that you just look at the, at the, at the dye going into the left atrium um, and send, they're just calling it or picking up a number. There is some semantic, there is some subjective or objective data that goes behind that, although it's all visual, but I will just walk you through that. So if you see, and during an LV gram, let's look at this picture A here, I'm just gonna label here. If you see a dye going into the left atrium, this is your left atrium here, this is left ventricle, but you see a very small amount of dye going into the left atrium so that the color of the left atrium never is never darker than the left ventricle. And then you also don't see that the left atrium is dilated. And within one or two beats, you see that the dye in the left atrium goes away. That's probably a mild mitral regurgitation or one plus mitral regurgitation. Then we move on to the picture B here. So you take it one step ahead. You see more dye into the left atrium and you see a little bit of dilatation of the left atrium. But again, the left atrium will never be darker than the left ventricle in this case. So in this case, you can call this a two plus mitral regurgitation. Now we come to the more severe mitral regurgitation in picture C here. So in this three plus MR, basically what will happen is that you will obviously have left atrial enlargement, but during the cardiac cycle or after one or two or three beats, there will come a point when the left ventricle opacification will be the same as the left atrial. So there will come a point where both the left ventricle as well as the left atrium will have the same amount of con like uh, contrast, not the contrast, but the color. The opacification will at some point will be the same in the left ventricle and the left atrium. And then you will eventually see that the dye will wash out. And then last but not the least is four plus MR. So four plus MR is obviously all the things that we already talked about there the left atrium will be dilated, there will be, there will be a lot of dye going into the left atrium. With one thing that is very important is, there will come a time when, when the left ventricle opacification, or there will be less dye in the left ventricle and more dye just swirling in the left atrium. So to put it in perspective, or combining all these information that we talked about, four plus MR, where the dye will just keep hanging in the left atrium and there will come a time where the, all the dye from the left ventricle has been clean, cleared and that it will appear lighter and the, and the left atrium will appear darker. So this four plus MR is when, as we talked about, the left atrium will be darker than the left ventricle and three plus when both 
left ventricle and left atrium will, ap will appear the same color. There will be left atrial dilatation. 2 plus MR, there will be some dye into the left atrium. The left atrium will be mildly dilated. The dye will clear uh, within two or three beats. And 1 plus or mild MR is when you have a little bit of dye going into the left atrium, no left atrial dilatation. I hope this was helpful. Um, next time we will cover another topic. Do let me know if you have any questions. Um, happy to cover other topics as we go along. Thank you.